15 minutes. Okay, let's go. We ready. All right. Good evening. This is group one. Uh, deaf, dying, and bereavement, PSC 715F. The first question, Kubler-Ross describes the stages of grief as denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Which ones were present in the movie? Okay, I'm Chris Carpenter. I am the proponent. And I, from my perspective, in looking at uh, the, the, the stages of grief, and looking at Matt and most of it, you know, was more evidence uh, during his encounter with the Trinity, where he became angry after the, the death of his uh, daughter, Missy. And he was angry because he, in his mind, that God allowed her to experience this Buddha death. And he wanted uh, the killer to experience the pain that he felt and wanted God to, to pain on him and he wanted God to forgive the killer but God uh well no he no he God wanted him to forgive the killer but he was so angry uh that he didn't want to forgive him but God said that he, that he God wanted to accept you know the, the he wanted and he wanted uh for the the man to God want to ex, you know extend his love to the killer and uh, also uh his daughter Kate was you know, we learned there was some anger issues too because of the, the brutal death of Missy. Then, as we see that uh, Mac and Kate, as we learned, they, they eventually they, they did show that they enter into a state of depression because of their inability to really cope with Missy's death. And which led to a strain in their relationships because both of them felt responsible for her death. And so they didn't communicate that. Uh, their, their pain towards each other. And Mac's relationship with his family as a whole was strained due to his state of uh, depression. And also, as we learned, you know, during his mysterious encounter with uh, the Trinity, uh, Mac was able to accept Mrs. Uh, death, understanding that she was safely in uh, God's care. And during this time, we learn how he made peace with his father, as, we, as in the beginning of the movie, show how abusive his father was towards him. So he was able to make peace with his father, and as his father apologized, and uh, Mac was able to accept the apology. And you see at the end of the movie, Mac and Kate was able to make peace with each other after Mac assured her that, you know, that Miss is in a good place, and that God assured him of that, and that what happened was not their fault. So it, we saw how they were able to 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 be able to uh, accept Mrs. Death in the end once they understand things from God's uh, perspective. Okay, Kubler Ross. Uh, can I step in, Dwayne Robinson? Uh, can you hear me, Dwayne yeah, Robinson? Yeah, uh, good. Can you clear? What you um, you um said that uh, Mac made peace. Um, who did Mac make peace with? Uh, Mac made peace in the end. He made peace with God. Uh, and his father as well. Uh, because we said that towards the end, we saw the encounter that he had with his father. So you know, he had a lot of guilt and hate. With his father, based on what happened as a as a child growing up, how abusive his father was, so he was able to make peace with God, and then he made peace with uh, his father, and in the end, we saw where he and Kate was able to come together. I he talked with Kate and kind of made things right with her. I guess we connected back with uh, his daughter Kate because you know God told him that she needs him to uh, to really be there. Uh, for for her, he was able to do that and assure her that everything is all right, this is okay, and then it was not nobody's fault as to what happened. So he was because there was a disconnect for a period of time between you, where Mac, really, really all his his family as a whole, especially with his uh, daughter uh, Kate. 
Mac had to make, uh, so you're saying that Mac had to make peace with himself for killing his dad. And that's what um, carried on all this hatred throughout the movie with Mac being a killer. Mm -hmm. And he, so, but, yeah. He had to so carry, he Mac, carried that. He carried that hate because of what, you know, and I guess a lot of times when people go through the trauma that uh, Mac went through, um, you know, we carry the hate. And sometimes over a period of time, it's, it's, we don't realize it's still there until God brings it back to light, too. So you saying Mac had forgot all about it when he got married. Um, so he forgot all about it. He had killed his dad. And I don't think he necessarily that. forgot about it, but he just, I guess he tried to, he tried to move on. He never gave me the address like he should have in the beginning. Do you think Mac was a bad person? He no. killed his dad. No, I don't think, you don't think a, I don't think he was a bad person. He was a killer. Uh, that one out. He was a killer. Yep, he was a he was a killer to enough. Uh, uh, I don't think he was a, a bad person. Uh, and it's it's just amazing when you when you when you look at that how uh, Matt was was well, how he was judgmental towards the killer of, of Missy, and he was and I guess sometimes when we do. A lot of times we look at what other folks are doing, and sometimes we don't. We don't really. We, I guess we don't focus on some of the things that we have done. So, uh, like I, said, I don't think Max a bad person, uh, based on. You know. So are the police? So are the police bad people for killing us? So what's your opposition, though, sir? What's your opposition? You're asking him questions, but what's your, <laughs> what are you opposing? Come on, oppose, oppose. We got 15 minutes. Let's oppose. <laughs> I'm opposing that he's thinking that uh, Mac is such a good guy, but Mac was a killer. And a lot of times, so, you know, we're saying that the police is a bad people. So, but I guess what we but I that, guess what, that can be contradiction. I guess what but I guess when when you look at when, I guess what we what we have to do to uh and, and I guess God pointed you know pointed out in his in the, in uh in their interaction is you know with the, with the interaction with uh Mac that none of us are in a position to really judge, you know, sometimes the good and the bad and, and the evil. We have to learn how to get give, give everybody to God. Because uh, when, when, even when you look at the police, now <clears throat> from a from our perspective, we tend to think that these police are bad because of all that's going on. And in my heart, from and if you look at it from a fleshly standpoint, I believe I mean I would say that there there's something's troubling with police officer that continues to. Uh, 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 you know, inflict the, uh, the pain and inflict the, you know, I guess, how they, you know, kill and brutalize men of our brothers and sisters. But I, I'm not gonna, you know, condemn them per se that they are evil people. That's not for me to judge. But I do believe that, uh, that there's something wrong with, with it. And what we have to do as people is, which is hard is to learn to give people to God and let God do it. And that's, what, and, and that's, what, that's a little bit of what I gained from, from the, the movie with the interaction with, with Mac and, and, and the Trinity that he has to learn how to, we have to give give people to God and let God deal with, with, with them. Now, go ahead. And I'll take a little bit of an opposition there because that's one of the challenges for me because when I go back, and read the Gospels, Jesus called out tyrancy and evil. True. And in, in many ways, he was judging, you know? And uh, so that when I go back, you know, I'm, you know, you know, I had a hard time with that part of the movie because it was, as one of the people wrote online, it was like New Age meets the uh, Bible Belt. You know, it was like, you know, and I know that was, is idolizing, but I think, well, Jesus judged. And then if you go back to the last book of the Christian Bible, John the Seer really judges. 
if we look at it as interpretation as the not the last day of the uh not as an eschatological thing but he's talking about the the if the roman he's talking about the last day of supremacy and john really judges you know uh that uh they're doing wrong so that was a part of that you know i saw the idealism in there that's that's true wasn't because, that, oh yeah. wasn't, sorry? That a, wasn't that a judgment of systems rather than individuals because yeah. in the movie there's a judgment of a, a man right an individual right but jesus didn't judge necessarily men but systems, systems. Still agreeing. systems. i think um yeah. john um, judge system. So right. when I think we talk about racism and we talk about sy a systemic um, oppression, I mean, we're talking about a system. Right. You have a nice white daughter-in-law. She's nice or she may do something wrong, but it's not to judge the individuals, I don't think. Right. That's why I agree. that you're judging the system. And, right. and I think that's what Jesus did in a sense. Like he didn't, judge, he pretty much judged the system that was in place and how people was uh, dealing with one another and, and oppressing one and other right. people. See, see, that's what we have. And when we look at the protest that's going on, it don't we should don't we should we should look at whether we judging the people. We are judging the system. That's right, in right. place, and, real, and, and Jesus is, 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 is telling us He has commissioned us as part of our work to go out and 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 and, and, and fight a good fight, stand up for the injustice system that's, that's causing many forms of injustices. And but right. as far as the individual, we shouldn't judge the people individually. That's up, that's up, up to God. We have to right. try to break down these walls, like for instance, uh, that's uh, the various forms of systemic racism that's in place. That's what that's what we have uh, to do. Right. I, mean, I think I, it's yeah. the person as I think it's the person individually. I would say it all day. What? I would say it's the person individually. Right. A system, a system don't make me kill nobody. It, I kill you because I want to kill you. Oh, a system, a system <laughs> does create. It's a system creates an environment for certain things to happen. A system can create an environment where children are not well educated. It right. can create an environment where there is not food in certain neighborhoods. It can create an environment where you can't get a loan for a house. They can create an, an environment for, for death to happen, for unsudden death to happen. I mean, sudden death to happen. So the environment can be set up so these things are yeah. are happening. But as a community, I wanted to also express um, that I did not see denial as one of those seven stages in the movie. It seems like he had gone from seeing the death to um, really kind of going into a state of anger um, and depression. You know, um, he wasn't connecting with his neighbors. He wasn't connecting with um, his family. Um, his wife was concerned about their relationship. And so, um, and, you know, it is only when he gets to the opportunity to really come in contact with God, um, as um, seen by um, the, um, what was her name? Papa. When he met Papa, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ, that he was able to begin to sort out some of his challenges. He um, exerted his anger um, when he discussed um, why God had killed his daughter. And if he had not killed his daughter, then why um, didn't he stop it? And so, um, and then finally, it is only when he can transform and forgive himself for all of this stuff that he's been holding on to, like his father's death, you know, probably not being able to protect his mother, that he's able to accept. And then he gives her a beautiful burial. But I wanted to say one thing about the movie that I just, I loved. And you remember when he was in the garden and it just looked like bushes and it was just chaotic and everything was crazy. And then, but when you see the aerial view, it all makes sense. 
So one of the things that many Africans believe, and I think many African Americans hold true to that, is God is in control. So no matter what is going on, we believe that God has the answer. We may not see it right now, but we see it by and by. So I also saw a lot of kind of Africanisms in here in terms of the burial and making sure she had a proper burial, um, making sure that it was beautiful. And, you know, the whole idea um, in um, what we've been studying is that it is important to have that time to put your, I guess if you want to say, put your folks away um, really nicely so that that they are able to um, rest in peace, those who can rest. Although there's this whole other thing is that when you die suddenly, then you may not get to go to the ancestral realm, which is interesting. But... Um, yeah. His whole life was denial, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, his whole life, but, but it was in the stages of grief. But you could say that he had been in the stages of grief all his life. A lot of us have been probably in stages of grief all our lives with the death that we see in our communities, uh, you know, the things that happen with uh, our children. But from the time that the daughter is, um, is killed, um, you know, you don't see him saying, oh, she's not dead. I remember when my husband died, I, you know, I would hear him coming in at night. You know, I thought he was walking in the house and I would have to, I would have to catch myself to recognize that, you know, he wasn't here anymore. But I didn't see that with this case of death. But I think you could say that in terms of what happened with his dad, what happened with his mom and, um, and, the, uh, and the murder, uh, when he poisoned his father, I think you could say his whole life was a denial. And I would, I would, point. I would extend it even to say that, um, as people of the African the diaspora, we have we have been continuously in a state of grief for four hundred years. Yeah, we have been robbed of our native land. Not only have we been robbed of our homeland, our homeland has been occupied and destroyed by by evil forces, even to this day. You know, we have been separated from our ancestors. That's a part of the, the process of uh, colonization and enslavement is to separate us from our language, from our people, and, but from our ancestors. And we've been, you know, you know, so I think one of the things that's happening now, and it's coming to me now, is that in this stage, many of us are beginning to recognize the reconnection with our ancestors, which entitles us to re reconnect with our language, reconnect with our people. Uh, you know, one of the things that Dr. I think Lomax was sharing that when the ITC changed, uses the word Afrocentric, there are people who objected to Afrocentric rather than Afrocentric, you know, and that there's a, a sense of embracing at an HBCU school of theology, embracing uh, our heritage and our customs and our people that was resisted by some of the members of the faculty. I can probably identify they probably were the non-African people on the faculty. I know that to be true. And so that we still are fighting, even now among the, uh, even in 2020, we still, as a people, are still in various stages of grief. You know, and I can see that looking at Mac because there's a little quick uh, moment in there, but he's after he's been beaten and he walks away, he's walking in the street, and Papa is on the front porch there, and she offers him apple pie. Yeah. And you know he doesn't recognize it then, but it took me a moment. Like she's the same woman, yeah. you know. <laughs> and you know the God who was with us even in that moment most of pain, God is with us. And yet we as a people oftentimes have been separated from giving there our God. Our God has been so white nice as the one that we've been given to, we don't recognize the God they gave. That's why our young people don't go to church. We still give them a white God and a white Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, and then we give them a God that's that's mean and hateful and ugly right. and who wants to destroy stuff. And right. and if they do this, they're going to hell. And if they do that, they're going, you know. And so, um, so it's like, you know, it's like 
they don't see God as a loving father, which I believe that Jesus came um, to do is to teach us that God is a, um, a loving father and that we're all made in the image of God. And that's one of the things I think when it comes to this whole idea about racism, you know, that kills our spirit. And right. I think that we've been in this grief situation for, for, for since we've been in this country, you know? And so our, our white brothers and sisters can't see us in the image of God. Right. And, you know, I know we're getting close, to, we're going with the 15 minutes, too many of us from the pulpit don't see us in the image of God. You know, and, you know, we, you know, many of the services are so full of sin and damnation rather than liberation that they're, they still, they're, they're still preaching slaveholder religion. Now, that's my take on it, but, but so that, that adds to the grief. You know, that we had to uh, deny our own humanity. You know, Brother Dwayne, your finger is right on, in front of your, your face right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So we get, they get to see that smile. But, but I think we have that page of saying that perhaps uh, we can almost say that Mac almost represents, uh, even though he's white, he represents the energies that we bring into a situation particularly as, as, as African-Americans of, you know, being abused, being beaten. His father had been beaten, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and did not know how to love. And, uh, and how to be, the father was doing the best he could based on what he had gone through. Amen. Huh? Amen. Yes, amen. You know, That's true. <laughs> and, and yet, you know, the father even said to him, you're such a good father. I'm so proud of you because you, what Mac was actually doing was reacting to what had happened to him until this experience where he began to come from a deeper place. You know, kind of like many of us say, I ain't gonna be like my daddy, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we have not done the, the, the grieving and the healing from that process of what we've gone through. Um, I think all of us need to take uh, that journey that Mac took with, with God. Right. That's what, that's what happened, a lot of us, need they have not allow ourselves to to take that journey. That's why we, a lot of us still in grief. A lot of us still dealing with a lot of the turmoil that, that that go back from generations because a lot of us have yet to take that journey with God. And it's a difficult one. I I um I think in a couple of my classes I've been learning about how the environment changes one's DNA. So we talk about epigenetics yeah. and how over years your your DNA changes to accommodate yeah. all of this oppression and all of this stuff. So as you said, we need to do a deep dive. We need a great big healing. Uh, we need to go through that same process, as you said, and I agree with you totally. We as a people need to go through that same process um, that Mac went through um, on his journey to really go into the deep recesses of our hearts and minds to kind of clear out this stuff that um, we have been given generation after generation. Yeah, the, uh, I forget her name, it's not coming to this moment. Uh, she is, um, uh, is does a work on post-traumatic slave. George uh, DeGru? Huh? That's no, it's another woman. Another oh, woman. Okay. She okay. doesn't call it um, syndrome, she calls it disorder. And there's a lot of work with the talk about the the neurological damage that does from trauma, and then when you go through the global trauma of of as African Americans, and then we go through the individual trauma as individuals, um, we cannot help but act out the way that we do in many cases right now because it's not just we don't know how to behave and we just need to to just straighten up and fly right. We have some neurological damage. They also is transferred through our DNA. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I wrote for uh, my paper last semester in a doctoral class, is that we don't give ourselves, and others don't give us permission to have collective trauma as black. We let the Jews have it. Oh yeah, we understand about the Jews having collective <laughs> trauma. But y'all black folks can have collective trauma because if you had, if we recognize it, it meant that 
we now have to hold white people accountable. Yeah. You know, they have to own their own part in this. If not their part, they benefit from it. You know, because I worked at predominantly white schools and for the white kid, people always say, well, I, that was my, I, 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 I didn't do that. I, have a, that. I had no part of that. You know, and that, that's the first thing when you talk about collective trauma or historical trauma, I didn't own slaves. You know, the, the hands go up, they start flittering, you know. And that's the, but we as African-Americans have to own, we have collective trauma. And I saw that in the grieving stage from, from Mac. He had, she showed, they showed us his collective trauma. Well, the interesting thing, I think in this whole thing, if we, if we use this grief model um, that we've been given um, and like um, um, Reverend Robinson said, you know, about denial, that Mac was in denial, but, you know, we have to think about our own journey. You know, right. we, we have been in denial, many of us. Um, you know, we've been angry. We've been, we've been bargaining in all these ways. And now we're finding out that even with your money, even with your weave, even with all of that stuff, it still is not going to separate you from being a Black person impacted by racism. But the one thing that it seems that we never get to is acceptance. Right. You know, and maybe maybe that's a good thing that we don't. Maybe maybe that means we continue the fight. Well, you know, as you were talking, that what hit hits me, and I know this is steps. We too many of us, and I see this a lot in many of our mainstream black churches. Even when we turn it over to God, it does not remove that we got to work through our own stuff. And so sometimes when grandma goes to church six days a week, there's a lot of unresolved stuff sitting in that belly that she's turning over to God, but she ain't hearing God come to the other direction and help her work through that. And I'm using gender, but it's not gender specific. You know, I want to, you know I'm not just talking about grandma, but you know, but I, you know, most, I know very few men to go to church six nights a week, <laughs> you know, but we go, but we don't deal with abandonment and racism and other things that have gone on. We say, well, I just turned it all over and so everything's going to be all right. But it's still in our, in our core who we are. And even in Mac was a church man. You know, we see him in church in that early stage with, his, with all of his family. And, and so he would, he, would, he would say to himself, I'm sure that he was a, a religious man until trauma hit, until a, deep, a deeper trauma hit. And that's the challenge, being religious. Because religious is easy to do. Religious no. means that you yeah. show up at church, you pay your tithes, you do some good things, and, and you really never get to the depth because you think all that superficial stuff is going to transform you. Right. And it doesn't. And that's, and that's the thing that was brought out, too, uh, where Jesus is not concerned about the religion. And he's more concerned yeah. about your relationship with us. He want to be your, he want to be friends with us. He want to have an intimate relationship right. with us. And that's where, that's when. But we are so stuck on religion until that's all we know, and that's been embedded in us for generations, ever since we don't come over here as slaves. And it was embedded in us by the white folks that you have to act a certain way, and do things a certain way, and if you don't do this, you're going to hell. Yeah. So a lot of some things have been embedded in us for you know for a long periods of time. And, and yet the people who who tell us that don't do it themselves. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know. Exactly. They they done stole, they done beat, they done murdered, they done raped, and they say, but y'all got to do this, you know. Um, so yeah, I saw the no, no, you know, but I think when we, as we wrap up on this question at close to the 30 minute mark, that I think we saw Mac representing us in many ways. Uh, and that the acceptance, um, I think sometimes we think acceptance means that we've accepted racism and oppression. Amen. And that what acceptance means is we have to accept that we're loved by God. Why? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that we're God's creation. And and that's a different way because I think too often that we confuse our English words get confuse us here that 
if I accept this, I, it means I accept all of the stuff that is happening to me. Rather, I have to accept responsibility of working through the things that have happened to me in the hand of God. You know, I'm, I'm amazed that um, the older I get, the less religious I get, the more connected to the divine I become. Amen. <laughs> you know? Amen. And so um, I don't have to shout every Sunday in church. I don't have to dance every Sunday in church. Uh, but sometimes sitting in this house, I get my praise on. Hallelujah. You Amen. know, because it's relational. And uh, and I think too often, that, uh, even as the scripture tells us, you know, woe unto those who publicly display, you know, their, their, uh, their religiosity. And so I think what we saw with Mac, that he, as he came to his comfort level, his relationship with everybody changed. Not just with God, but with each of his kids and his wife, and he was able to forgive. He had to, he had to even forgive his daughter in order for her to forgive herself. And so um, I think we've hit the, the, the stages. We talked a little bit on the global, the, the, the ethnic, um, and then we get the brother Christopher. Are we recorded? Oh yeah, we stay recording. Okay. Can we say that this is a wrap? Yes, sir. Uh, you, uh, that'd be fine with oh, Dad. me. Uh, I think that I would say that we hit all the areas, um, and and you know, I think. Um, uh, Dr. Rowe hit the most valuable one. Um, we in denial, you know, and I think it has uh, taken off from early age, from our childhood, and we actually go all the way through our lives um, living in denial and, and and walk around just like Mac. Mac walked around in denial, and and he became so judgmental. Think about it now. He killed his dad. That's what he was trying to get over the most. He was a killer. At the end of the day, when you get finished with it, you can say a system, you can say whatever. Matt killed him. Matt killed his dad, and he was having trouble with that. Did I kill my dad for the right reason? Did I did I have killed my dad just because he killed my mom? I mean, he was beating my mom and doing all these things. His dad was broken. His dad was doing the best he could do. So, you know, it's it is when we take God into our own hands. Yeah. And and that's what um as a society what we've done is taking God into our own hands and letting God be God and letting us be us. The thing about it is when we clean up our lives, the person lies next to us to be, begin to clean up itself. You see when Matt got his life together, everybody else cleaned up. I it's about cleaning yourself up first. That's right. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. I won't talk about the system of patriarchy. Okay. We'll talk about that another day. Okay. <laughs> we, we can continue these Zoom calls after we have a class. You know? <laughs> this was good. This was a good discussion. I, I, I really enjoyed this discussion. <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you. Okay. Yes, same and here. Facilitator. <laughs> and, 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 and Reverend Dwayne, good luck. And, and, you got a lot of work to do to get moved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, you all. Brother Christopher, I know you don't, you move right down the street, but yeah, I understand, you know. Oh, yeah. Be blessed, my friends. Okay, oh, yes. thank you. You as well. You. Take care. All right, I'm going to bed now. So, Christopher, yeah. if you need anything, let me know. Okay. I'm going to still look for what we did. I just want to be able to know how to do it, you know. Sure. No problem and at all. And this is better, I think. Okay. Okay, good.